Hi, I'm Larry Puckett. Today I want to take a look at a brand new product from the folks at AccuraScale. So let's go ahead and get started. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Now, if you remember back in November when I attended the Worley Model Railway exhibition, I was able to interview both Fran and Steve from AccuraScale. And one of the things that they showed me was the brand new Siphon G. And they had some pre-painted uh, models that had been uh, shipped over from China for the show. At this point, I now have a couple of models to actually share with you. But before we get started with a look at the model, I want to go over the history of these just briefly because it impacts on what they're offering. So these started out in milk service. So uh, the Great Western was one of the companies that was very active in shipping milk to the big cities like London. And a lot of it came from the southwestern part of the country. And so over time, they developed various cars or vans, whatever you wish to refer to them, to haul these big 70 gallon churns of milk uh, to the processing plants. And this was one of the uh, one version that they adopted. Uh, they started production of these in 1930 and it went up until about 1945. During that period they produced about 115 of these. So this was the original paint scheme or livery if you will uh, in the brown and the white roof. And as you can see here they had these uh, grills up along the upper part of the uh, of the side of the van and that was for ventilation to keep the milk cool on its trip from the farms on into uh, London and other major cities for processing. So during the 1930s they pretty much stayed in this livery and then during World War II a number of these, I believe 60 in all, were conscripted for use on ambulance trains on the railway. And as a result of that, I think about 60 of them were repainted into an olive green uh, color with a large white rectangle on the roof and on the side and a large red cross on that. So they were used in that during the war. Following the war, those were returned to the Great Western Railway and the Great Western rebuilt uh, many of them to this original configuration. So they looked pretty much like this. And some of them though they kept in the configuration that they had been rebuilt in for the ambulance service. And those were used for parcels. So you started out for milk, went to parcels, parcel vans, luggage vans, that kind of thing on the trains. Then after nationalization, they began to do some other type of work. Many of them stayed in this uh, configuration. Others were rebuilt. They had ventilation doors added on the side and various other modifications were made over time. So you ended up with a large number of different variations in the body configurations. In addition to that, as I said, they started out in this brown and white. Uh, they had the olive green version during the war for the ambulance trains. Then after nationalization, British Railways painted theirs into what is referred to as carmine red. So it's a, a beautiful uh, crimson red color. And then after that, they went into a burgundy color. And then again, they changed the paint scheme or the livery and they went into a BR blue color. So you've got a number of different colors over that time period. Then finally in the 1970s, a number of these were converted for engine parts uh, movements around the railway. And those were called in parts cars and those were painted olive green again. So in total, AccuraScale has produced 16 different versions of this car. And they're all available from Rails of Sheffield right now, except for one. The end parts car you can only order from AccuraScale. So I suggest you take a look at the AccuraScale website, AccuraScale.com, and they have photos there. They also have a, a history of these cars and the changes that were made over time. In addition, I'll put a link to a video from their YouTube channel where they go over some information about how they went about producing these models. So if you have time, take a look at that if you're interested. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the actual models because they really are something. 
If you look real close, these are just covered with details, even down to these small steps right here on the trucks. And these are etched brass parts that have been added on here. So there's quite a bit of detail, etched, bar, etched brass parts, and separate uh, molded parts that have been added to these. On the end here, they have produced a very nice rubberized diaphragm uh, that goes between the cars. So they would be appropriate for use with your quarter type uh, passenger cars. One thing to be very careful of, these hangers up here on the top are very, very delicate. So when you're getting these out of the box, be very careful of these because uh, it's very easy to break these off. They're very fragile. They're much more fragile than the ones on your Hornby cars. Right here, you'll note that they've got a rubber projection off of the uh, diaphragm, and that is for a lamp. So a very, very nice way of adding that detail on there. Make sure you don't rip that off. We've got sprung buffers, very nice little detail. Let me point out that everything being on here, I didn't have a single part uh, that popped off during shipment. If you look here, we've got separate metal hand grabs here on the doors, very nice detail. The louvers up here, you can see, or the, um, the grill work up here at the top, this is actually cast into the body. It is not an etched brass uh, etching that's been inserted, and it is solid behind there. So they did that, they say, so that it would uh, not weaken the structure of the, of the body itself. So it looks like a nice etched product, but it's actually molded in details there. Uh, if you look here, one of the details that's different among these, this is one of the brake handles here on the uh, on this version. And on the other version, I'll show you that in a minute, uh, it's slightly different. So, th so that is, is one of the details that they made uh, different on these. Uh, we also have our battery box here uh, centered under the car. And if you look under here, there's just a ton of holes that are provided in the bottom of the car. And I assume that is so that they can add and move all of these various parts around to replicate different prototypes. So it's an amazing amount of detail. If you look at the trucks, my trucks swivel quite freely without any problems. These are very nice freewheeling wheel sets. The ends of the wheels are set into metal, either probably bronze bearings, so they turn very freely. As you can see, I checked these out with my uh, micrometer and they scoped out to about 14.4 millimeters. So they run very well through frogs and turnout points, no problems at all there. And you can see all of the details here on the underside. The brake rigging is, is uh, separate right here so that the truck can swivel, but a very nice detail here. And they have the, uh, the standard uh, coupler uh, boxes here so that you can attach. I've already put KDs on these. Uh, they come with the standard tension lock couplers, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, let's look at the other one that I have here. Okay, they come shipped in these typical plastic containers that everything comes in these days, and then you just pop them out like that their detail parts back there, and we'll pop it off. Let me zoom in and we'll take a look at the details bag that comes with it. Uh, you can see that we've got a number of small uh, detail parts that can be added. There's a, uh, a coupling right there. There's uh, the various um, hoses that can be added at the ends, and then these magnetic uh, couplers. Let me get those out because I want to show you those. So these are the uh, magnetic couplings, and you can see when they come together, they do attract quite nicely. So uh, we'll try these on uh, in just a minute. Again, we have the same details on this end here, the rubberized diaphragm here on the end, beautiful etched steps here on the sides of these trucks, just gorgeous. These are very nice. To be honest with you, I wish Acura Scale would get into the U.S. market and give Rapido some, uh, or Rapido, uh, some competition because right now I can purchase this uh, from the Acura Scale website. I believe it was $54.95, something like that, in dollars. And uh, in the U.S., this would probably sell somewhere between $75 and $100. Uh, there are comparable cars being produced by 
Walters and by uh, the folks at, I think, Atlas, as well as Rapido. And theirs are selling for that range. So that's what I would consider this to be, about a $75 car as opposed to a $55 one. Before we go on, I wanted to point out a couple of things. On the brown version, the original version, the uh, trucks were very, very free moving and the wheels were. On these, the wheels are very free rolling, no problem at all. However, these trucks are a bit stiff. So I think you're gonna have to probably pull these off and I'll show you how to fix that. So what you're gonna need is a Phillips screwdriver in order to uh, get that truck out of there. So just go ahead, unscrew that like that. And it should pop right out at that point. You can see how stiff that is. Okay, what I have here is a small rat tail file. So I'm just gonna insert that in here and we're gonna clean that out a bit. We're gonna get this so that it moves freely and rotates freely on the bolster. Okay, let's see if that did it. Okay, so you can see it's moving very freely now. This one, as you can see, is very, very stiff. So let's get it out as well and do the same fix. Okay, no problem there. So we now have both trucks rotating quite freely. So you can see this is the distance that you get or the separation that you get when you use the tension lock coupling. So that's gonna give you your second radius without any issues. If you have straight track or much more generous curves, then you can go down to using these magnetic uh, couplings that they provided. So I'll take those out here in a second and we'll, show, we'll try those. Also, I have found that um, since I use KD couplings on my uh, rolling stock, and locomotives. I use these. found that a number 17 gives you a very near to a prototype uh, coupling with the uh, two diaphragms touching. So we'll look at that in a minute too. As you can see right here, I've added the uh, little magnetic uh, couplings. So with those in place, we've now reduced the distance between the diaphragms here to a very nice distance there. It's about the thickness of this barbecue skewer. Gives you much closer prototype looking uh, distances. But let's take a look when you use a number 17 KD. As you can see, I've got a number 17 on each truck. So we'll put those together and you can see that they're much closer than they were. I can still get a skewer down in here, but it does tend to bend the diaphragms just a bit. So very similar though to what you get with the magnet. But it's easier to uncouple them. I can still go down through here, use my skewer, and uncouple them without any problem. So you get a much closer near prototype distance between the cars. So that's gonna look really good on my, uh, on my layout. On the modules, they are straight. On my uh, Piedmont Southern, my main curves are 36 inches, and on my Helix, it's down to 30 inches. So they'll be able to take that without any problem at all. Okay, I'm going to put both of these on the uh, on the layout and we'll see how they track. Okay, let's take a look at the two Siphon G's behind a King class running through a crossover here on the Piedmont Southern. And note that I have number 17 KDs on both of these cars. Okay, so they've come through the points and the frog without any problems at all. So what I wanna do now is reverse them and back them through this crossover. Okay, let's go ahead and back uh, the uh, cars back through the crossover.
So as you can see, they made it through there without any problems at all. Now let's hook up to a rake of uh, Hornby coaches and come forward with it. And I'll give you an idea of how close they couple up to the uh, Hornby car. Well, that's a wrap for today's video. I hope you enjoyed my look at the new Acura Scale Siphon G's. They've got a, just a myriad of details. It's unbelievable what they've been able to do and for the low cost that they're asking for these. So, if you haven't got one on order, you might want to check in with either Rails of Sheffield or with the Acura Scale website. And if you order at least two of these at the same time, they'll give you a 10% discount.